Hey guys, I'm Dave with the Straw Gallery. And today, we're going to make a circle cutting jig for my palm rotor. Over the years, I've made several circle cutting jigs for my routers. As a matter of fact, there's a couple on the wall behind me. And since my palm router is just easier to maneuver, I thought it was finally time to make a jig for it. That, and I need it for a project I'm working on. Let's see how it came together. To start this project, I marked the diameter of my router base onto some half-inch birch plywood, and then I drew a line perpendicular to the base on the outside of that circle. Next, I clamped that straight piece of plywood along the line while clamping both pieces to my bench. I made sure that the stock was overhanging enough that I won't cut into my bench top. I put a quarter-inch spiral bit in my router and cut about a third of the way through the plywood base. I cut the groove leaving about two inches on either end. I adjusted the depth and made a second pass, still only part way through the plywood. One last adjustment and the groove was cut through. I thought I had a three quarter inch router bit, but no. So switching to plan B, I marked out a quarter of an inch on either side of the groove. Now I can readjust the fence so it sits on one set of those marks and clamp it down. A second fence is added along the second set of marks and I verified the width by sliding a piece of three quarter inch aluminum along its length. I adjusted the fences as needed to ensure the bar ran smoothly. And this is when I realized my router base would hit my clamps. I took the clamps from the near fence and reclamped the far fence and then I could remove that first set. There isn't enough room on my base for clamps to hold the second fence, so I connected it with double stick tape. I lightly set the fence in place, checked the fit of the aluminum bar, and then I firmly seated the taped on fence. I changed over to a pattern bit in my router and set the bit to cut about an eighth of an inch deep. I'd drawn the approximate location where I could start and stop my cuts on the fence, but those weren't critical. I started the router, plunged into the cut, and worked down the far side, then back up the near side. I adjusted the bit to give me a depth that was just a hair over a quarter of an inch deep and repeated the cut. Before removing the fences, I tried the fit of my aluminum bar to make sure it slid well and sat below the surface of the jig. Only then could I safely remove the fences. Shifting over to the adjustment pin assembly, I had cut a three quarter inch wide, quarter inch thick piece of aluminum bar stock to three inches at the miter saw. You just have to go slowly and you'll be fine. I marked a line three quarters of an inch in from each end and then marked the center of those lines. I used my spring loaded center punch to mark the locations prior to drilling. I wanted to mark the location of the center line for the pivot pin, but a razor didn't quite do the trick. I checked up an eighth inch drill bit and drilled a through hole at each of those locations. Then I replaced that bit with a number seven bit so I could later tap a quarter twenty thread. I buy my taps with the correct size drill bit so I won't have to guess or use a fractional bit that's not quite right. I removed the burrs from the underside of the aluminum with a file and then drilled one of those holes out. Now I can clamp my bar down and tap the threads. I did my best to keep the bit vertical and made sure to back out the tap often to clear out any chips. Once that was done, I could try the knob I planned to use. Despite looking correct and fussing with it for like half an hour, I realized the knob had a quarter twenty-eight thread and just wasn't going to work. I'll have to see what other knobs I've got kicking around. I determined the length of the centering pin and cut it from a piece of eighth inch brass rod. I used a cutoff wheel on my Dremel tool. This is much easier to control on small stock than my grinder and left a cleaner cut than a hacksaw. I removed any burrs with a few swipes of my file. I still wanted to mark that center line of the pin and since I had the Dremel out I thought I'd give that a try. Not the best plan. To secure the pin to the aluminum bar I mixed up some five minute epoxy. 
I coated one end of the pin and set it into the eighth inch hole. It seemed a bit loose, but I thought the epoxy would hold it in place. Coming back to the base of the jig, I ripped it down on the table saw so it was the diameter of the base. You'll often see these jigs made with a taper, but the palm router is small enough that you can keep the sides parallel and the jig is still easy to maneuver. After tracing the shape of the router base on both ends, I took the jig over to my bandsaw and rounded them. A quick sanding with my random orbit sander was all that was needed to clean up the saw marks. I removed the base plate of the router and used that to find the best locations for the mounting screws on my jig. Since I marked the top face of the jig, I had to transfer the hole locations to the underside. I like to use a 16th inch drill bit to do that. Just be careful to get as close to the center of your marks as you can. I switched to a 3 8 inch Forstner bit. I set my bit depth to just over the thickness of the screw heads and drilled from the bottom of the jig. I had to adjust the depth just a bit and then I could drill the other two holes as well. One more bit switch, this time to a 3 16 inch bit. These holes go all the way through the jig. Just go slowly so you don't blow out the opposite face of the stock. The last step isn't necessary, but I used a countersink bit just to kiss the top of the clearance holes. This gets rid of any burrs that might get in my way later. I dropped the base plate and the super short mounting screws into a Ziploc bag so nothing got lost. Then I used slightly longer M4 screws that I happen to have on hand to mount the router base to the jig. I made sure to start all three screws before cinching up any one of them. That gives me a little wiggle room to line things up. Once the screws are all tight, a quick check with a steel rule let me know that the heads were all below the surface of the jig and won't scratch my work. The last thing to do for the jig is to add the pin assembly. I'm not going to lie, this is the third assembly I built for this jig. The first pin hole was too loose to securely hold the pin. The second kind of imploded when I attempted to press fit the pin into a slightly smaller hole. Once I realized that my drill bits were out of order, and I used the correct bit for the brass pin, all was well. To hold it in place, I used a washer and a makeshift knob with a quarter twenty thread. It's not pretty, but it works. I'll replace it later with a nicer knob. To run a test of my new circle jig, I'm going to cut a half circle. I kind of need that for a project I'm working on, and it's what inspired this project. I set the distance from the center of the pin to the near side of my router bit to four and a half inches. Then I drilled an eighth inch center point on my plywood. After setting the bit depth for the first pass, I set the center pin on the jig into the pilot hole on my plywood. Now I can start the router and plunge into my cut. It's best to work in a clockwise direction to avoid a climbing cut, but it's okay to back up and sneak up in your starter line if needed. If you're cutting a full circle, that won't be an issue. Then I adjusted the depth of my bit and made a second pass, this time cutting through the plywood. One last check of the dimensions, and the interior of my arc is right at 9 inches, which is just what I needed. Jigs like this are quick and easy to put together and a great way to get a clean circle or an arc for a project. This jig will let me cut a radius as small as an inch and a half and almost as wide as 21 inches in radius, which is more than enough for the vast majority of projects I'll ever do. I've been toying with adding a micro adjust feature to a jig like this, but knowing me, it may take another decade for it to actually pull it together. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this video. Was there something I could have done differently? Smarter? Safer? Faster? Drop in the comments below. I'm also curious what kind of circle cutting jigs you guys use. If you enjoyed this video, maybe give us a thumbs up and share it with friends. If you haven't already, maybe it's time to hit that subscribe button and the little bell so you get notified each time I put out a new video. 
As always, I'm never sure what's coming up next, but it should be something interesting. So until then, have a great day. Stay safe. Take care. We'll see you soon.